What's up guys, in today's video I'd love to share with you a pretty cool opening variation that's gonna allow you to crush your opponents in as little as 9 moves. It starts off with your opponent playing pawn to e4 and you respond with the Scandinavian defense pawn to d5. And what I really love about this is that you narrow it down to just the Scandinavian defense. You don't care if your opponent wanted to play the Italian game or the Rude Lopez or the whatever game against you. You say, hey, we're gonna play the Scandinavian defense and this is my territory. Now, after White captures the pawn, you then, instead of recapturing right away, play a smarter move, knight to f6, because you don't want to expose your queen to potential attacks too early in the game, and so you want to recapture this pawn with a knight. Now, what will your opponent do in this case? Well, there are a couple options, and pros often play pawn to d4, we're gonna talk about that later, uh, but for now, let's stick to the move pawn to c4, which is actually the most challenging response of white, that actually defends the pawn on d5, forcing you to play the gambit, so you are a pawn down now, and that is the only move of white that could stop black from recapturing the pawn right away, that's why I'm saying that it is the most challenging. Now you have to prove that you have some compensation for the pawn, but in fact we're quite happy about that. So here's what you're gonna do, you're gonna play pawn to c6, because you do want to, anyway, get rid of this pawn, which a little bit ceases too much of space in the center of the board, and also that exchange on c6, and pawn takes c6 is by far the most popular move by white here, that allows you to bring your knight into action. And now you can already see that, although you sacrifice the pawn, now you have two knights into the game, your bishop is ready to join the attack, and white is still completely passive, which is a good indicator that you have really good idea and good prospects for a crushing attack early in the game. In most of the cases, white plays here knight to f3, and I really love that, because it is a quite crucial error of white that basically puts white on brink of disaster, and here's what's great about this. I mean, normally, white is supposed to play knight to f3 in pretty much every opening. Every classical chess book would tell you that you gotta play that move, but in this particular case, it is wrong. Now, what's wrong with this move? Well, you are going to play pawn to e5 anyway, just to open up for your bishop and to complete your development. But in this case, pawn to e5, in addition to that, contains an quite unpleasant threat of pushing the pawn forward to e4, changes in this night away. And it's not very easy for white to handle with this uh, early attack somehow. They may try stopping it by playing pawn to d3, we're gonna talk about that next, or another option, they may just continue developing playing something like knight to c3, and that's also pretty common. In this case, you do push the pawn forward to e4, attacking this knight is quite unpleasant for white, because notice that you do control these central squares, white cannot place his knight there, they have to move elsewhere, and if they move knight to g5, something like this, then it hits the pawn on e4, but you can defend it very easily by playing bishop to f5, and white is in a massive trouble, actually, quite already, because this knight is misplaced, you're gonna play h6 and kick it away, it's gonna be forced to play knight to h3, and after that, whatever you want, you can capture there on h3 and destroy white's pawn structure, so that's one problem. The other problem of white is that they got stuck with their development of their queen side. They can never move this d pawn forward, because if they ever do that, you know, you simply capture that, your pawn and bishop and queen are all controlling that crucial square, so white's kind of stuck with their development, and this pawn on e4 gets really annoying for white. For that reason, in most cases, they play another wrong move, queen to e2. Now, they desperately hope to get rid of this pawn, they just want to capture it, but that fails to a counter blow knight to d4. And with this, basically already obtained a winning position. Now, you hit the queen, you're threatening knight to c2, which is gonna fork the king and the rook. That forces white to go all the way back to d1. And now you play that another idea, pawn to h6, kicking this knight back. It cannot take on e4, it's defended by your pieces, therefore it has to go back to h3, and now you can disrupt white's pawn structure, and after pawn takes, there is a nice, cozy checkmate with knight to f3 check, forcing the king to move, and then queen to d3 as a very nice checkmate. But act actually, this variation, this entire variation is really common, and even strong players fall for the trap like this, because previous moves of white are quite natural and all seem to make sense. Going back a couple moves, we can see that allowing black to push e4 is really bad for white. And so many of your opponents would be tempted to play pawn to d3, hoping that it stops you from playing the move pawn to e4, and yet you play it anyway. And it turns out that although you're okay with an exchange of queens, which is gonna happen after pawn takes, and then you trade queens here on d1, even in an endgame, white's skill is still dangerously exposed. Now, after this exchange, uh, first of all, we can notice that this king is very vulnerable to your attack. You're gonna castle queenside quickly, and you're gonna start attacking it. 
And also there is another problem that right now you're threatening knight takes f2, which is going to fork the king as well as the rook. For that reason, they play bishop to e3. And now you want to quickly castle queenside to continue your attack. So we play bishop to f5, preparing for us to castle queenside. And also our bishop is going to attack this diagonal so that white's king can never move there. They usually play knight to d2, trying to cover the king. But then you simply castle queenside. And what is quite defenseless here, I would say, because first of all, their king is, again, deadly exposed, and you can just attack it however you like. Secondly, for the very same reason, for lack of castling, they can get their rook involved into the game. And you just want to play something like bishop b4, you know, rook e8, quickly mobilize all your forces and attack white and win the game. They usually try playing king to c1, removing the king from this x-ray, and then you trade here on d2, and then with the move knight to b4, basically win the game. Uh, what's the point here? Well, with the knight to b4, we're, we're threatening knight to c2, attacking the rook, as well as the bishop. And, you know, if rook ever moves to b1, it's gonna be hit by the bishop, and all in all, white is uh, losing the game right away. In the game we're analyzing, they just decided to bite the bullet and at least take the pawn on a7, but that clearly didn't help. Black still played knight to c2, attacking this rook. The rook moved away, now bishop comes over to b4, attacking this knight. Your rook is also doing a good job attacking along the d-file. And after white played knight to f3, black just mobilized their final piece, rook to e8. And you can see that white is completely paralyzed, and you dominate all over the board. In the game, white played pawn to a3, and probably there are many ways for black to win this game, but I'd love to ask you to think about this, and if you can't find a way in shot for black, please write it down in the comments below, it's gonna be a quick tactical quiz for you. And now let me quickly address some of the common questions. Uh, what if, on um, right at the very get-go, white does not take here on d5, but instead pushes the pawn forward to e5? Well, in that case, they, you get, like, a really superior version of the French defense, so this pawn on e5, is too far away from the rest of white's army and you can then play pawn to c5 knight to c6 target this pawn on e5 your bishop will likely to go on g4 somewhere in the future if whatever goes knight f3 you know you can play your bishop there knight to c6 attack this pawn and that certainly is not troublesome for black there are also two a lot more popular options after white captures here on d5 you can play knight to f6 if white decides not to hold on to this pawn on d5 with the move pawn to c4 that we analyzed they may play pawn to d4, and that's how pros play here. I've got another video about that, I'll link it up there and also in the description below the video with a really cool Portuguese gambit that you can uh, deploy in this case. And if instead white plays knight to c3, again, that's not a problem really, that does not in fact defend this pawn on d5, because you just take it with your knight. And so white usually here plays another inferior move, knight takes d5, which helps you to bring your queen out. And now just by looking at the position, you can see that it's more or less symmetric. You just have your queen out. And on the next moves, you can play knight c6, bishop g4, castle, queen side, and you have really nice development. Now it's, it's, it is rather white who's struggling for equality. I also have another video about this particular line with some really cool trap inside of it. So if you decide to give it a try with this opening variation, I would recommend that you check out that video just as well.